Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, uh, it's that time of the year. Microsoft released a new Windows SDK for MDT and WDS to support the deployment of Windows 10. And as you know, I am a huge fan of MDT and WDS and all that good stuff. And apparently, uh, with the new SDK for Windows 10 support for deployment-wise, uh, a bunch of goodies have been attached to this, and I'm super excited. One of the goodies is um, uh, Windows ICD, I believe it is, uh, Image Configuration Designer. Uh, someone have, has requested that, so pretty soon I'm going to do a video on that. And this video is all about setting it up and building it from scratch. Now, I destroyed my old virtual machine, my old MDT server, and I rebuilt everything from the very beginning, and this is what the video is all about. So... First things first, I created a Windows Server 2012 R2, 64-bit. And as you can see on the taskbar, I have all my goodies. I have my uh, Windows ICD. I have my uh, Windows System Image Manager, my SQL, because I'm going to be doing a lot of database stuff on this time. Uh, my WSUS. Yes, I'm doing some WSUS con configuration within MDT. Uh, I have my MDT deployment share already configured. And my WDS is already done. So rather than boring you to click, 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 I'm just going to show you slides. It's real fast. So let's go into view and enter full screen. Now, this PDF is going to actually be attached to my blog site so you guys can get a copy and take a look at it and follow me throughout the video. Okay? So let's begin. So first things first, you want to get yourself a copy of the Windows ADK uh, file, the SDK file. Okay, uh, you can either download it, like you can download it, you can download it locally, or you could just install it on the spot. I did an install on the spot. Click on next. Uh, if you want to participate, go for it. I'm gonna hit no on that, and accept the terms. And by default, you're gonna get the deployment tools, uh, Windows PE, ICD, which I'm super excited about that one, uh, USMT, uh, Windows Performance Toolkit, and Windows Assessment Toolkit. Now, it's really up to you. If you're going to be doing database work with uh, MDT, you could use the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Express. Uh, I am using a Server 2008 R2, and it's full, full license, so I could do a little bit more. Uh, once you get all that, and uh, once the installation is completed, you're good to go. You're, you're done with the SDK. Now, for me, the way that I built my environment is uh, I went to my server manager. Uh, I went to add rules and features. I clicked on next here, clicked on next, clicked on next. And uh, I believe from here, uh, I think I'm adding WSUS, okay? From here, I'm adding the Windows uh, Server Update Services. Click on that. You're going to get this dialog box. Click on Add Features. Click on next. Click on next. Uh, by default, you got the WID database and the Windows SUS services. Just leave those by default. Click on next. Um, the next window, which is the content, is going to want you to tell it where you want to drop your Windows updates. I created a folder in my C drive. Not the best practice, okay? I would say do this on a separate partition. Now, my entire build is not really best practice. I Remember, I have Active Directory. I have WSUS. I have WDS. I have MDT. I, I, have, I have everything in one virtual machine. Not the best practice, okay? Uh, I created a folder, C drive, drop the location there, clicked on next, click next here, leave all the IIS roles default, click on next, and then confirm it, install, and then you're good to go. Now, once you're here, you could close this window. Uh, I, I went inside the WSUS node, and I click on that ye little yellow bar right here. And once I click on that bar, I just launched the post installation task. Eventually, this pops up. Uh, just click run and it's going to run through it's it's going to complete the post up once it's completed you're going to get this just hit close once you hit close you get the nice little wizard and from the wizard just click on next uh, i am not going to be participating in any improvement program so i just uncheck that uh, i am letting w stuff synchronize uh from microsoft updates uh, i'm not using a proxy so i left that be uh, I start the connecting, and once you start connecting, that's basically allowing your WSUS talk, to talk to Microsoft Windows updates. And once that's confirmed, you get this. Just hit next. Pick your language, English for me. 
And from here, you pick your product. Uh, by default, all Windows updates are selected. Okay, now for this video and other videos that I'm gonna be doing for you guys, I'm only pushing out Windows 10. Okay, so you go all the way to the bottom at the win Windows section, uncheck Windows, everything will get deselected, and just select the one that you want. For me, I just pick Windows 10. And I'm gonna have all the critical updates, definition updates, and security updates. Those are the ones that I want. Click next. You can synchronize it automatically or you could do it manually. At first, I did it automatically for it to push down all the updates. Once that was configured, I changed it to manually because, it's, again, this is a testing environment. So we click on next on that. Uh, again, I said uh, begin the synchronization and hit finish. And there you go. So my WSUS is already up and running. Next thing that I need to do is uh, configure my database. So uh, I popped in the ISO or CD and you start off going inside the installation portion of it and once you're in the installation portion you're gonna get this It's gonna do it uh, set set port rules installation and issue setup and if everything pass you are, it allows you to go okay uh, I am doing a full-blown 2008 R2 uh, installation so it's not an eval I got a license click on next on that accept the terms click on next it's gonna do. Uh, it's gonna support the files and install all the stuff that it needs. Install. Uh, again, it's gonna do an initial check. Uh, I got a warning because I'm installing a database on domain controller. Not the best practice, guys. Okay, it's not the best practice to install a database within a domain controller. Uh, my firewall. It's okay. Got two warnings. It still allows me to continue the installation. Let's click on next. And uh, I left the SQL Server feature installed because I want to pick which features I want to install. So I picked the uh, database engine services, full text search, and I picked the management tools. Those are the only ones that I did so far. Uh, click on next. Pretty soon I might do some reporting. And again, it's going to do uh, another check. If everything passes, awesome. Click next. Uh, I'm going to leave the default instant. Uh, if you want, you can change the instant if you want. But I just left it as is. Click next. Uh, disk requirement, I had enough. Click next. Uh, uh, modify your server configuration of what uh, account has access to what and what you know what 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 uh, what user allows these services to turn on automatically so click on next on that uh, for this portion I like to do mixed mode I like to enable my SA my uh, my sysadmin account give a password make sure that you add the current user that's logged into the machine click on next click next here let us do its thing click next and now uh, you're ready to install, just install it. And once installation is done, you're completed with your SQL database. Awesome. So the, the next thing that I did once my database is up and running, I downloaded my Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2013, 64. It's an update one, the one that supports Windows 10. Got to make sure you guys pick that one, all right? Double click on it, get the nice little window right here. Click Next. Uh, accept the terms. Click next. Everything is default. You don't have to touch anything. Click next. Well, you probably need to touch something if you want. Uh, if you want to relocate it and you don't want it on the primary partition and you want to do it on a secondary secondary partition, go for it. But again, for this video, I'm doing everything in one partition. Bad practice, I know. But I just make sure I take a lot of snapshots. And uh, click next. I don't want to participate, so just hit no. Click next. Install. And eventually it's going to copy everything and you're going to get that nice, beautiful, completed successfully. Click finish. Once you click finish, you're going to locate your deployment workbench. Uh, open it up. You want to get inside your deployment share node. You're going to right click on it and you're going to create a new deployment share. You're going to get the nice deployment share wizard. Uh, I left the deployment share path, the default at C drive. Again, is up to you. I, I would recommend you guys placing it somewhere else, not the primary partition. Click next. Uh, I will leave the deployment share the same name as deployment share dollar sign. A lot of people like to customize that. Really up to you. Click next. Uh, deployment share description. Again, I like to leave it as default, especially if you're dealing with more of a testing environment. Just leave everything as default. But if you're customizing it more at your job environment, go for it. Click next. Uh, this is up to you. I unchecked everything. Don't need none of this stuff because most likely I'm going to be modifying it within the custom settings dot ini file all the task sequence click on next nice little summary next it's going to do its thing and it's done once you're done expand it and there goes your node awesome 
Now, the next thing that I needed to do is, I believe I did WDS, Windows Deployment Services. So again, back inside your server manager, add roles and features. Click on next here, click on next here, next. And you wanna go to the portion that says Windows Deployment Services, click on that. Make sure you have all the added features, click next. And next again, next again. Uh, by default, it's gonna select the deployment server as well as the transport server. You don't have to change anything, just leave everything as is. Click next and install and let us it do its thing. And once it's completed, that's it. Uh, once you have your WDS up and running, not actually up and running, but install, you wanna locate it within uh, your start menu, open it up, uh, expand the server node, right click on your server and you want to configure the server. You get a nice little dialog box. From here, just click on Next. I'm actually going to have my WDS integrated with my Active Directory, so I'm going to leave it as the default. Uh, click Next. Again, you could change this. I really recommend you guys placing it somewhere else. Don't leave it on the on the primary partition. Bad practice, I know. I got to follow my own my own rules. Uh, click on Next from here. Let's give you a nice little, it gives you warnings like, hey, why are you putting this inside the C drive? Just click Yes to bypass it. Uh, by default, you got do not respond to any client computers. I change it. I always change it to response to all client computers, known and unknown, and then click next. Let us do its thing, and uh, it gives you the portion to add an image. I'm not going to add an image now because I haven't really configured my MDT at this point. So uncheck that, click finish, and you should be up and running with your WDS. And that's it. That is the end of our presentation so i'm pretty excited as you as you can see i have my mdt up and running on this machine uh i think on the next video we are going to import windows 10 we are going to create a reference image with our windows 10 uh i am going to be playing around with the windows image imaging and configuration designer definitely this tool is awesome i've been reading on it and i got a lot of stuff planned out that i'm gonna be pushing out to you guys and uh that's it guys again i'm going to place that pdf that i use with the presentation uh showing you all the step by steps so hopefully you guys get a copy of that and can follow uh follow me you know follow the video with it and that's it, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Uh, stay tuned for a lot more. I mean, a lot more Windows 10 is out. And we need to uh, go deep in it, configure it the way that we want it for our users. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>